It's time for another installment of Sea Hunt. It's still alive here on Scuba Shack Radio. And this time, we're going back to Season 3, Episode 19, titled Cross Current. Cross Current premiered on May 14, 1960. Now, in this opening scene, we see Mike diving off the coast of Florida, weightless, being pushed along by a strong current. He is researching the current, and he's using a die and drift meter to measure it. He has found an offshoot of the Gulf Stream veering west. It picks up in power and starts knocking Mike around and he's spinning around. He's smart, he doesn't fight it. He finally gets clear and when he gets topside, he can't wait to radio telephone Sherry Bishop, a researcher in the Caribbean, about his find. We then see Sherry running up the beach to her tent outpost to take Mike's call. Before Mike can tell her about his find, she asks Mike to come down. She too has found something. But what it is, we don't know. She doesn't have anyone to dive with and needs Mike's help. Mike picks up a paper schedule and tells her he can be down there on Monday, three days from now. That will be fine with Sherry because she's all tied up until then. Mike asks her, with whom? Sherry tells Mike that her friend, Fran Parmalee, will be available to meet him if she's out working. It's perfect flying weather as Mike makes his way south, and he will meet up with the prettiest scientist in the Caribbean. His sixth sense, however, tells him there is trouble ahead as he walks down the beach carrying his doubles in one hand. As he reaches the tent, out rushes Fran along with the local policeman, Lieutenant Campos, and his sidekick, Jose. Fran tells Mike that Sherry has been missing for three days. Gone. No motorboat. Nothing. They've searched for her, but have not found her. Lieutenant Campos believes she is dead. Fran and Mike aren't going to give up. After the police leave, they both go inside the tent and try to figure out what Sherry was working on. Mike rifles through the charts and finds one with squiggles representing a current. He then gets her notebook for more details. There's a current that's a half a mile offshore and it runs north for about four miles. Sherry's dive gear is gone. She's out there tracking the current. Mike and Fran want to search, but they need Lieutenant Campos' police launch. In the next scene, the launch is underway to the spot of the current. Mike gears up and giant strides in. With his die marker, he finds the current, and now it's time to track it topside. Back on board, Mike rigs rigs up a marker and tells us how it is at neutral depth riding the current. They will follow the float. As they navigate using the buoy ball, there's no sign of Sherry or her boat. Campos says, It's a hopeless mission. Then suddenly, the float stops. Mike needs to head down to investigate. As he enters the water, Lieutenant Campos tells him, Remember, down there, we cannot help you. Mike heads down, and and as he follows the line down, he quickly finds why the float is stopped. There is an underwater grotto, and the line is snagged on the entrance. He decides to enter carefully, but the current is too strong. He is tossed, turned, crashing into the bottom. He has to ride it out and hope the current subsides. Fortunately, he is finally clear, but now he is miles from the launch. And as he surfaces, the only thing in sight is a tiny island. So Mike heads to the island, comes ashore, and starts calling out Sherry's name. We now see Sherry passed out among the boulders on the beach. Mike spots her. Thank God she's alive. As he tries to move her, she cries out in pain. It's a broken arm. 
He has to find some wood to make a splint. As he finishes up, he scolds her. You never learn. You always have to do things yourself. After three days, she is weak, hungry, and thirsty. There's only one way to solve this, the ocean. So Mike fashions a spear from a stick and a knife and heads back underwater. He dives down and starts feeling groggy and notices the fish moving in a southerly direction, opposite from the previous current. At depth, the current reverses itself. He spears a fish and returns to Sherry. After she eats the fish, she feels better and wants to leave, but Mike wants her to rest. He tells her to breathe deep, close her eyes, and, like being hypnotized, she drifts off. Mike now decides he will leave and go get help, but Sherry wakes up and confronts him on the beach. She wants to go too, broken arm, low gas, and all. She won't take no for an answer, so he decides you win, and he takes her on the reverse current swim back to where Fran and Campos may be waiting. Sherry is no help with a broken arm. He must drag her along underwater, and it's cold at the deeper depth, but they find the southerly current. But is it too late? The scene shifts to the police launch, and Lieutenant Campos is weighing anchor and heading for port. Slowly, they are making their way upward, trying to stretch Sherry's air. Too late. She is out of gas, and now they must buddy breathe. They have to ascend at any minute, and just then, he spots the tow line from the buoy ball. They made it, and they made it to the surface, but there's no boat. Sherry is panicking, and tells Mike to swim ashore. She can't make it. He tells her that she never gives up, and it's not like her. Sherry is convinced Campos isn't coming back. Then, suddenly, Mike spots the boat coming back. Sherry doesn't believe him, but it's true. They are saved. As they make their way back on the boat, Lieutenant Campos tells Mike that he wasn't coming back to search for Sherry's body. He came back to look for Mike's body. Mike responds by giving him a little shove and a sly smile. Now, Cross Currents was remade in the 1987 version of Sea Hunt starring Ron Ely. It was titled Jennifer's Rescue. Once again, I'm still trying to get my hands on that 1987 series. But for now, the original Sea Hunt is still alive here on Scuba Shack Radio.